Several people on the forum have asked me to give them more detailed how-to step-by-step examples of how to do tempo mapping. And tempo mapping is a great, one of those kind of hidden gems. Once you figure out how to do it and you, you start to use it, you'll, you'll use it on almost everything you do, whether you're a songwriter or a remixer or a producer. For example, if you're a songwriter, it allows you to just record the song the way you would naturally record it on the instrument that you would play, whether it be guitar or piano, and then add any other instrument or any other musician that you want to that mix once you're done with the, with the original recording, and they'll all sync up exactly with the original playing. And I'll show you how to do that in the demo here in a second. If you're a remixer, it allows you to go in and match the, the actual natural groove of the recorded song, whether it's maybe you're doing a remix of some hit song off the radio. It allows you to go in and get that groove and then line up different drums, different beats, uh, different instruments to that and actually change and replace out different things and create your own groove still based on the original uh, song. Or if you're just a producer, it allows you to go in and record live multi-track sessions and then add uh, your own groove and loops from your own libraries to that session. So maybe you don't have a saxophone player in the recording session. You can bring in a saxophone part and line it up perfectly with your band once you've got that thing tempo mapped. You can also go in and just take a, a good recording of a good tight band and tempo map it and just make it a little bit tighter. You can always make any group tighter and I can show you how you can even make the tightest group even sound more tighter. So it's uh, actually can be used in a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different ways within the DAW environment. So let me just show you how easy it is to do it. Here's a recording of a guitar part I played. This is done with no tick track, no alignment whatsoever to where I'm at on the grid or tick track or anything. So just a natural free-flowing progression that I played on the guitar. And I'm going to show you how, to, how simple it is to actually tempo map that in Studio One. Okay, so the first thing, we got to do some setup. So the basic setup is make sure that your time base is set to bars. It won't work unless this is set to bars. So go ahead and set that to bars. So turn your metronome on in this stage of the game. Your metronome is right down here. So click on it and it'll turn blue and then it'll be on and that'll be your what, what you'll reference in terms of your temp your timing uh, and turn your snap off because you're what you're doing here is you're lining the, the the grid which is where the snap would normally fall to to what you just recorded not the other way around okay so and I've got that snap turned off which is right here this uh, time base set to bars and I've just recorded this this track and then I want you to set your track now over here in the inspector. Open up your inspector right here. And set the tempo to don't follow. By default, it'll be time stretch. Set it to don't follow because you want this to be static. This becomes your ruler that you're, you're lining up to and you're setting your measures to. So this has to stay static. All your other tracks, if you've done a multi-track recording, will be set into a time stretch mode so that they'll follow your tempo changes that you do in the with the the tempo changes. So let's go ahead and set that up. Once this you've got this set up so this is static and that's that's why you want this to be follow. Okay. Next thing I want you to do is I'm actually using a couple of macros that I've put out on the exchange. One's called insert tempo changes and it just inserts 16 tempo changes. So it saves you some keystrokes of doing that, and it puts them right in on the on the measure lines. And then this one here just rewinds a little bit and plays it, so it allows you to audition where your tempos are at and what you've just done. Okay, and the next thing we need to do here is set the, the basic tempo of the song. So I've recorded this without any tempo track, so let me just play it back. <laughs> you do is you can you, you can tap right here on the timing section of it right here and set your own tempo so I'm just gonna kind of get the ballpark tempo One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So I know the ballpark tempo of this uh, performance is around 79 to 80 beats per minute. 
So once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and line up my performance to a line a measure. It doesn't make it matter what measure you do. I'm just going to pick measure two here, just as long as you line it up to something, one of these measures. So here you see the measure two. I'm going to go ahead and line this up to it. And the way you do that is um, I'm going to trim this back so I can move it over and then zoom in uh, to measure two. And I'm just going to drag it over until I visually line up that with measure two. You can pull it out to make it a little more accurate if you want, but it's probably close enough right there. So that now begins exactly on a beat. Let's go ahead and listen to that. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is just open the tempo track, and we're going to insert some tempo. Basically, we're doing this command right here. Insert tempo change. Only I've written a macro over here called tempo map, which you can download from the exchange, which will automatically insert 16 of those at a time each time you run it. So it just saves you some keystrokes. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up with the uh, beat 2. I'm going to run that command. And it inserted 16 things here. So you can see them along the way. And then it, two, it wound back to 2. So let's just go ahead and listen to that. And we'll start our tempo mapping process. Okay, I'm just going to let you watch me do this in real time. I'll do a control click on it, and it'll grab both sides of it when I do that. And you know you're in the right place if it grabs both sides of it. If it only grabs one side of it. Uh, do it over again until you get it to grab both sides, but it should grab both sides. Now, here's your... Okay, so the downbeat is right there. So I want that three to get pulled over to there. So the way I do that is I click on that and I drag that over to there and release it and the three snaps into where my cursor was. There's the next beat right here. Drag that to that one. And if I want to audition, this one's a little off, but there's a little more tweaking on it. that time I didn't grab both sides of it and it didn't work right so make sure when you click on it it gets both sides of it and you don't have to be exactly right you can go through and fine-tune it later on but you kind of want to get it oops I misdrug that one do that again Now you see here we've run out of our our inserts, uh, tempo change inserts. I'm going to run the command again. And let's stick 16 in there. So there is your tempo map. You see the variations, fluctuations in tempo that are done there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is turn snap on. We're going to bring in some other instruments and line up to that performance. So let's just bring in some drums. Start the drums off with beat two. And when I do that, I'm actually going to go over here to the uh, inspector and I'm going to set the tempo of that track. Sometimes if it's a loop and it hasn't been or had its tempo set, you have to set it. So I happen to know this is going to be close to 80, so I'll set that to 80. When I do that, 
it automatically by default this is set to time stretch so this is going to stretch to every uh, tempo change that I have based on the fact that it was recorded at 80 beats per minute so it takes that 80 beats per minute and either subtracts or adds to that number with these numbers to make it line up so let's listen to it I'm gonna go ahead and turn the trick track off so you can hear our recording <laughs> See that lines up perfectly with my recording, even though I just did my recording free form, not listening to anything. I'm going to drag a bass in on measure two. Do the same thing. Set the uh, this this one's already set to eighty, so I just leave that one there. It should work out. Now, just to make it a little more natural, I'm going to actually make it sound as if the, the guitar player started off by himself. So let's get, uh, let's say uh, he plays two majors by himself and the drummer comes in so the drummer and the bass player then come in with him uh, and then I'm going to drag in a guitar part and we'll line it up with the beginning there and let's just say it comes in with on major four there zoom out to see all So you can just see how simple it is to just really build out an entire orchestration or band, whatever. It depends if you're a single individual recording things or if you have a band, you want to add more to it, tighten things up. You can just see how simple it is once that thing has been tempo mapped. So the key to that thing is making this tempo map that lines up with every change and fluctuation that you've recorded in the natural song. There you go. That's how easy it is to do tempo mapping. Remember to download these two from uh, the exchange. I will go ahead and, and leave the instructions step by step and you can hit pause on your video and, and look at these closely and just follow them step by step. Give it a try. Once you've done this once or twice, it gets pretty simple. You can today with Studio 2.5 improvements, what they've done, they uh, made a huge improvement on this little command right here, which allows you to move this around and with that you can do tempo mapping 125 percent of the time it takes for this to play the song to actually map the song there you go give it a try thanks